I hope that you've come today to celebrate Jesus Christ. I, and I, I, I come today, I, when, even when we were praying in the office this morning, uh, God keeps speaking to my heart. We celebrate so many things. We're so quick to celebrate so many events in our life. We celebrate our birthdays. How many of you celebrated your birthday this year? Come on. If, if you didn't, shame on you for not doing so. You need to be thankful and celebrate God's gift to you of another year. Amen? And if you did celebrate that, you need to take notice of it. But so many times we, we celebrate holidays and flags and all these other things. And the most important season is to celebrate Jesus Christ. And though sometimes there's an argument, well, we don't know for sure when he was born and we don't know all that. And there's so much commercialism. Listen, this is what we have to work with is today is to celebrate Jesus Christ. And coming into this season is a focus not about us or anything else. It should all be about Jesus Christ. And that's the purpose of what we do and how we work. Is so that we can celebrate Jesus Christ and make him known. Amen? So today I'm going to talk just a little bit. And if you'll give me just a few minutes, I'm going to preach a message about the joy of Christmas. I've been doing uh, a series of, of messages about Christmas, and, and I've been preaching about Christmas. The first one is, is here comes Christmas. And then I preached a, the second ser- part of that series was when the Holy Spirit kind of moved into our service. And I didn't get to preach. Brother Bloodsoe didn't preach. The Holy Spirit used his time to speak about the message of, of Christmas. And he spoke in, a, in such a way uh, to, to make himself known. And then last week I preached about the idea of uh, Christmas and all the things that we are hurried up to do is celebrating Christmas. But what is Christmas and defining what Christmas is? And then this week I'm going to wrap this series up about the joy of Christmas. And I, wanna, I want you to think about this. Yesterday we were at, I was at a basketball tournament with my son in Prescott and we were with a bunch of people that had not been to church in a long time. I, they, they, they could definitely, you could definitely tell that. And we were sitting there communicating and all of a sudden one of the boys from my right, uh, his father was there and, and he said, so pastor, what are you going to preach on tomorrow? And I said, well, I'm going to preach about the joy of Christmas. And a man that was sitting down about two rows in front of me turned around and he said, well, let's hear it. And so for the next few minutes during the halftime, I got to preach. And I went through my message and began to share them. And he said, Pastor, he said, if I didn't know better, I would think you were trying to get me saved. And I said, if you need it, you get there. (laughs) After I preached it to him and after we finished the message and he came up to me and he said, it's been a long time since I've sat through a sermon. But he said, thank you for sharing with me the real reason for Christmas. And I thought about that and and the, the Lord began to speak to my heart, you know, When we are around this world and we are around others, that is when we share the love of Jesus Christ in every way we can. Amen? Amen. And so our purpose today is about celebrating Jesus Christ. Before I preach anymore, before I say anything else, I want to say it's good to have Jose home. Jose, just stand up, will you, and just let everybody see you. It's good to have him back. He's on leave for a few days. How long do you get to stay? Uh, early, January. early January. All right. So you got time to stop by and preach for me and everything else? No, I'm just kidding. But we do. I did. It's so good, good to have him with us. And, and uh, I've got pictures of the first time we did the Christmas program together and you, with you in it. And you look like a little baby. You still have that baby face, but you're growing up, man. I'm glad to see uh, the goodness of God's blessings on him. So glad uh, to see him home safely for a little while. Thank you for your prayers for him. God is blessing him, and I thank you for your service to our country, that we can stand here and have the opportunities of freedom that God has blessed us with. And so again, thank you very much for that. If you have your Bibles with me this morning, I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. We're going to preach this morning about the joy of Christmas. This is the story, if you will, in the Bible of the Christmas story that's about the shepherds as they watch the flock. And and I want you to turn with me here for just a few minutes. And I'm going to do my best to, to preach this message about the joy. And as you look at this, the scripture starts off in Luke, the second chapter, starting in verse 8. And it says, and now there were in the same country shepherds 
living out in the fields, watching, uh, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning about this joy that they spoke of, this great joy that he said. There is good tidings of great joy. I want to talk this morning about joy. I want to talk to you a little bit about what joy is. Joy is not just a feeling or a sense of happiness, a, a sense of achievement or an adjustment. Joy comes to us, and real joy is not an emotion. It is the happiness that, 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 that is not dependent upon happenings. And sometimes we are only happy when happy things happen. Just turn to somebody and say, I'm happy. Amen. Amen? Amen. Because here's what happens a lot of times is we become happy when things are going good, but we oftentimes see difficult problems and difficult circumstances that come our way. And one of the things that you need to know is that when you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not based upon what's happening in your life. It's based upon who is in your life. The joy that I'm talking about this morning is not an occasional circumstance, but it is a situation that you've learned to know Him and know His ability and His strength and His power. Amen. We think about true joy and we realize that true joy can come to us. Real joy can only come and can only be found in the babe you will find wrapped in the swaddling clothes and lying in a manger is what the angel said. You see, this true joy that I'm speaking of today is real at the graveside as much as it is in our fireside. It, is, it does not evaporate under the heat of adversity. It does not collapse in the presence of calamity. It does not sour under the test of poverty. It does not falter in the presence of misery. It is constant because it is found in Jesus Christ. When I was speaking and talking to those yesterday, I began to speak about what real joy is. And the young girl that was sitting there with them, their family member, she looked over at me and she said, Dad, we need a lot more joy in our house. When she said that, I said, that's exactly why this message needs to be preached. Is because we live in a world that's full of sarcasm and criticisms. It's all about racisms and everything around the world. They become in conflict with, conflict with so much. But I am going to tell you something. When Jesus Christ sent his son to die on a cross for us and gave us the hope of salvation and gave us the hope of eternal life, he came so that we would have that joy and that our joy would be fulfilled. When I look at this, I begin to realize the joy that he speaks of. You see, Paul spoke of this great joy, and he spoke of it in Philippians, the fourth chapter. And he began to say, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state that I am in to be content. I know that how to be abased, and I know how to abound. And everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things, the Bible says, through Christ who strengthens me. So no matter where you find yourself today, no matter how you are, you are doing today, come on, amen? amen. No matter whether you're, whether you're on top of the world or the world is on top of you, no matter how you are doing physically today, if you're, if you're sick, if you're... If, it, if you're rich or if you're poor, it doesn't matter. Here, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter because your joy is constant in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what Paul was trying to say. That's why he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it if I'm not well because I know his strength will get me through. If I'm struggling financially, I know that he said he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I know that, and I stand upon those promises. That's why my joy can be content. This great joy that the angels spoke of. First of all, the Bible tells us that it was great joy. It was good tidings of great joy. That good tidings means God blessed you. Good tidings, simply to say this is 
God has blessed you. How many of you know you're blessed today? If you're not sure if you're blessed or not, take a nice deep breath. And blow it out and just say, thank you, God, for giving me another day. I'm blessed today. Amen? I may not have everything in the world. I may not be without problems. I may not be without circumstances or situations that are difficult. But I can tell you this, that I am blessed today because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Because he woke me up this morning. It wasn't my alarm clock. It was Jesus Christ. Amen. I, and, and I will tell you something. When my eyes came open, I just said, thank you, Lord, for another day. I am blessed today. Good tidings have come. The shepherds sit there and they were, they, were, they were in the very situation of, of, of this overwhelming circumstance. These things, uh, as we understand it, have come. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said in John the 15th chapter, that I have spoken that you might have joy and that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. Let me ask you this morning, is your joy full? Sometimes we look at this idea of great joy and we begin to understand a little more about it. The joy that I'm speaking of will drive away your fears. This joy that I'm speaking of today is a joy that when fear comes in, you know who you have believed in. And you can be persuaded that he is able to take care of every and any circumstance that you face. This joy that we speak of today, that the shepherds were afraid. The Bible says that when the angel showed up, she was scared to death. The angels uh, spoke to the, the, the shepherds that were there in the flock. And these were, these were those macho guys, if you will. They, were, they, were, they knew how to handle themselves, if you will. They were tough and rough. But they were afraid. And I know some of us said, well, I would never be afraid of that. I'm going to tell you something. You can be as macho as you want to, but when the power of God shows up on the scene, it will open your eyes. Amen. When the power of God begins to move and convict, and they were afraid and their fears were driven away, this joy that I speak of drives away your fears. This joy would be to all people everywhere and of all nations and of all kind. It wasn't just to the Jew or the Gentile. It wasn't just to the religious or the righteous. It was given to us and to all mankind. Today you have a Savior and His name is Jesus Christ. And He came for you. He came so that you could be saved. When I think about the idea of this Savior and I realize the joy that He has given to us, this joy can only be found in the source of one and that is Jesus Christ. This joy that I speak of and the joy that I speak of from the beginning of this message is about finding that place in Jesus Christ. Because if you try to find it in other methods and in other ways, you will only fall short of the fullness of God's joy. Amen. The circumstance that we oftentimes find ourselves in and the joy that we try to fill it with. Come on. The world is trying to fill themselves up Amen. with the joy. Come on. If I, how come you think that the lottery sells so many tickets? Because we think if we got a lot, a lot of money, all of our problems will go away. I'm going to tell you something. You will have more problems and bigger problems the more money you get. Amen? Amen. I'll just throw this in there for your own benefit and for those of you who need it, hear it. Amen? Now listen to me. Amen. If you think money will solve your problems, you are never going to have enough of it. Come on. And then the second thing that I will tell you about money is this. If you can't be faithful over what you have now to tithe and honor God with what is his, then why would God give you more? I'll just take that up another day when I preach on that. Sometimes we try to find joy in the, in the substances of this world and the treasures that we find in earthly places and earthly things. We try to fill our life with circumstances and situations. We try to fill our life with joy so that we could have in relationships only to be discouraged and be disappointed. There is only one way to find true joy and that is found in Jesus Christ. Angels were given then the opportunity 
They begin to speak. They begin to tell the, the, them a little bit about what they were going to face in Luke, the second chapter, in verse 12. And it says, And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. You see, when I look at this, I begin to realize the nature of this. All of heaven sings the glory of God. Do you know that daily around the throne of God, the Bible says that there are constantly angels that are glorifying Him, that are praising Him. And the Bible says that we were created to praise Him. You see, the angels have no choice. They realize and recognize who He is, and they realize and recognize the, the place of who He is and what He is. But so many times we miss it because here's what we're doing. We're basing our praise upon our circumstances, and we praise Him if we got good things going on in our life. But one of the things that you need to do today, and I'm going to tell you this, and let, get this in your spirit, no matter what you're going through, lift up your hands and lift up your hearts and praise the risen Savior. Amen. When we sang that song, adore Him. Nobody has to pump and prime you to get you to lift Him up. Lift Him up because of who He is. Amen. 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 We get, we got a lot of, a lot of pastors and I'm not, I'm probably as much one of them as anything. I, I sometimes pastors feel we got to be cheerleaders. To get you pumped up and primed up so you'll worship him. But I'm going to tell you something. You ought to walk in and know that he is your savior. And that ought to be enough. Amen. You have a reason to praise him because he wiped away your sins and forgave you of all of your unrighteousness. The Bible says he's been faithful to you. He's cared for you. He's provided for you. And today you need to give him thanks and you need to give him praise because of who he is. When I think about this and so many times I look at this. The Bible says that it would be the joy of the Lord would be the peace to all men. And they began to sing and all of heaven began to clamor of the praise of Jesus Christ. The time had come. God had sent forth his son that he would die. But that God sent forth his son born of a woman, born of an earthly. He became flesh so that he could be the sacrifice for all mankind. I say this every time I preach a Christmas message is this. Jesus Christ had to become man, because there were no perfect men. Amen. Ladies, I just want you to look at that guy sitting close to you and tell him you're not perfect. I'm just saying, <laughs> Sister Bledsoe's agreeing with me 100% over there. And here's the thing, we were all born sinners. We were all born as sinners, but Jesus Christ, when he was born such a difference came because he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, not of an earthly father. And that's what made him a worthy sacrifice to, to hang up on the cross for the sins of you and I. Because if he would have been born with an earthly father, there would have been no reason for him to have to die for our sins because the sacrifice would have been flawed. Amen. I was preaching a similar message to this one time and I said that, you see, all of us men are flawed. And a lady that was sitting about three rows back looked up and she said, Amen to that, Pastor. We were all, I'm not just talking about us men now. I'm talking about every one of us. All of us that are humans. Amen. Now, I'm not sure if everyone is a human here. I think so. I think so. But here's what I'm going to tell you something. Everyone who has an earthly father... We were all born into sin. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ being conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of Mary because he had to be man, but yet he had to be and remain as God because he was without sin. And he died on a cross worthy to be the sacrifice for each of us and all of us. And today, if you want to know him, the best way that I can tell you is by believing in who he is and what he has done. When I look at this story of the, the, the shepherds, I begin to realize the, the effort that they made then because they, they went to see him. They heard it. Let's go on to verse 15, and it says, And, and so it was when the angel had gone away uh, from, uh, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. You see, they went to see him. They didn't, they didn't say, uh, I'll just phone it in. They went to see him. They had an encounter with him. They met him. Amen. Here's what I'm going to tell you something. It would have been easy to say, oh, wow, wasn't this great in the field? But they decided when the angel said there is a, 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 a come on, amen? amen. I want to I see him. I have people tell me this all the time when I talk to them about salvation. If I could see Jesus Christ, I would believe. That's what Thomas said. If I could, if I, I can believe that he rose from the dead, if I could put my fingers in the holes in his hands and, and touch the holes in his side, I would believe. Here's what I'm going to tell you, and, and you've you got to get this, all right? The problem with the world seeing Jesus is they're not seeing it in us enough. Jesus Christ lives in us, and we are the representative of Christ in this world. And how we present him and the way that we show him is the way that we are and the way that we live. Our lifestyle represents Jesus Christ to a world who needs a Savior. And when we see this, they, they went to see him. They, they didn't delay. They didn't call it in. They weren't like Herod and send uh, 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 some wise men to go, go search out this, this Jesus, this Messiah. And go find him for me. And then when you find him, tell me where he is so that I can come and worship him. No, they didn't do that. You know what they said? They said the angel had spoke to them. They were overwhelmed with what the angel had said, that they would find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So they packed up their stuff, left the sheep, and went to find out this Jesus and who he was. And they found the babe. If you seek Jesus, you will find him. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Amen? You gotta, if you're seeking for the answers to your life and your problems today, Jesus Christ is your answer. The Bible says, seek while, you may, while he may be found. When we seek him, search for him with all of your heart. Don't half-heartedly search for him. Don't try to mingle him in with the rest of your life, but search for him so that you can see him and feel him and know him. Amen. I never will forget, we were doing a Christmas program one time, and one of the shepherds who had come to the program couldn't resist. Himself. And when they went there, Mary and Joseph were there by the, the, the manger scene and the shepherds were there off to the side and, and they had all, they were just looking on to it. This one shepherd had to be the center of attraction. He wanted to just, and he said, I just have to touch Jesus. And when he leaned down, he, he patted him on the head. And of course, this was the funny part of it. Mary reached up and smacked his hand and said, you, don't, you have to ask before you touch my son. I don't know about you, sometimes I think that we're afraid to touch him. But oh, let me tell you something, when you touch him, he's already reaching out to you. He's already reaching to you. You see, God loved you even while you were yet a sinner. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave first to us. And then we give ourselves back to him, to commit to him, to surrender our lives to him. Seeking Him should be our desire, is to see Him and to touch Him and to know Him. And then finally, this joy that they had received, they went and told everyone about what they had seen and heard. This last part about it is what the Christmas season is all about. Us telling the world that we have seen a Savior and His name is Jesus Christ. We can decorate and do all the fun things that we do. And I have nothing wrong with decorating. I'm a little lazy and don't do it much around my house. But I'm going to tell you this. There is nothing wrong with decorating. But if you lose focus of the reason you're doing it, you have lost the season. The joy has become replaced with the feeling of who he is. You see, when we come to this place, we must understand. The Bible says, and now when they had seen him, they made it widely known, the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. They didn't delay. They, didn't, they did one thing. When they had seen and heard and touched, they went and told everyone. Amen? Amen. You see, there was a, there was, we sang that song earlier. Go tell it on the mountain, 
over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Come on, I, I, I don't know. Somebody, they were asking me yesterday, they said, what is your, Pastor, what is your favorite Christmas song? Naomi started it this morning, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. That's, that's, thanks, Jamie, that's enough. We'll do a duet later, but nah. When we sing about the Savior, I said, anything cr with Christmas talks about my Savior, Jesus Christ. That's my favorite song. I said, but, you know, I love it when they say, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Now, uh, this has been a really good, uh, joyful message so far. You guys go ahead. Musicians, if you'll come. We're gonna, they're going to try to strum it with me. You guys, Manny's back there. Come on up here. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to realize this. This little chorus that says, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. You know, there's a second time that we're going to sing Joy to the World. There's a second time that we're going to sing that because that he's coming back. And the Bible says that the same Jesus that went away to heaven, that, that died on the cross for us, the same Jesus that went to heaven, that same Jesus will come again. That same Jesus is going to return. And we're going to be singing this song in a different melody. We're going to sing, Joy to the world, the Lord has come again. Amen. 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 And we'll look at it. And Brother Farr, we'll stand on the edges of our seats and we'll say, The Lord has come. And all of heaven then will rejoice because our Savior, our risen King, is now present again. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Now I ask these guys to come up here. I threw this at some of you. Some of you are saying, Pastor, what in the world am I supposed to do? Well, we're going to sing this song as best we can. Dave, you got it? He, he's looking at me like, yes. I want you to do something with me. I want you to stand with me all across this place. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to sing the Lord has come. Joy to the world. How many of you know you're in the world, but not of the world, but you're still part of the world? Amen. Joy to the world. That's to me, to you. There's a Three Dog Night song that says, joy to the world. All you boys and girls. And, but that's a secular song. This is joy. The Lord has come. You ready? Let's sing it. Sing it with us now. Joy to the world. The Lord. I saw Naomi come in. Is she still back there or she, she went back that way? We're going to sing one that we sang earlier then. Because if he came and you know he came and you've received him and you celebrated him, then we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain and we're going to sing that chorus just over and over again. Let's sing it together.
that he is born. Amen. How many of you know that he lives within your heart today? Amen. Now, normally I have all the kids come up front. And all of them come up and help me tell the Christmas story. This year, my wife has a Christmas party that she's doing for all the kids. And, and she said, don't be too short because I want to make sure that they all have plenty of time to enjoy the party. I'm not stalling. I'm just telling you what I was told by her. But I will tell you this, that it is, this is a day of celebration. Today is a day that we ought to, we ought to take that song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Amen. I want you to turn to about two or three people. And I want you to look them right in the eye and say, I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. We're going to sing that little chorus one more time. Go tell it on the mountain one more time, and then we're going to get to that other one. All right, you ready? Let's sing it. Go tell it on the mountain. Tell it on the mountain. Come on, give somebody a high five. Tell them I'm going to do this. I'm going to go tell somebody today. I'm going to tell them about Jesus Christ. faith to sing one and and I don't know if the rest of the musicians know this one or not um, the sh faith says she's got it and um, and we're going to do this we tried to do this through a video you can be seated for just a few minutes because I'm gonna tell you all the things that are gonna happen in just the next couple seconds after we are we are finished with this song faith's gonna sing a song that says happy birthday Jesus you ready faith you got the words? I got the words. I, this is a little girl that's singing this song, Happy Birthday, Jesus. And I, 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 I wanted somebody that sounded like a little girl, so I chose Faith to sing this song. Thank you. They call her my daughter anyway, so. But I, I, I want her to sing this song. And then when we're dismissed, I want everybody that can this morning. There, listen, there, there are some things that we have to do at a birthday party. There are some things that we have to do at a birthday party. One of the things that you have to do is you have to sing happy birthday, right? Yeah. And, and, and Faith's going to do that. The second thing is, is we have to have cake, right? Yeah. We got cake. Uh, Pastor, there you go. Pastor, if you're wanting candles, you're going to burn this place down. No, I, I was going to do 2,000 candles. But you know, the third thing is, is here's what we're going to do. The third thing. The third thing is, is we have to give a gift to the one who's recipient of it. And we give Jesus Christ our life today. We surrender our life wholeheartedly and completely and say, Lord, here I am. I surrender my life to you. One of the greatest things that you can do is give your life to Jesus Christ. And while faith is singing this song, I simply want you to think about whose birthday this is that we're celebrating and why we're celebrating this day, the joy that he brings. Faith, go ahead. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jesus, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Jesus, I'm so glad it's Christmas.
Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to do one thing before you leave. Would you tell somebody about Jesus Christ? I see a lot of smiles on a lot of the faces today. You're blessed today. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord in your life. The blessings that he's given you. And today, the best thing you can do is tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Amen? Stand with me as we close this service today. Heavenly Father, as we stand in your presence, knowing you know everything about each of us today, Lord, I pray that each of us have already made that decision to choose you, to accept you, for the sacrifice you gave, leaving heaven in all of its glory to come to earth, to become a man, to suffer the pains that we have had to suffer on this earth. The Bible says in every way that you were tempted, in every way that you were flesh, and you felt our pain. But Lord, you came not just to be born in a manger, but knowing that the cross was your destiny. You came to die upon a cross of cruel death. And what a vain thing it would be for us to reject that Savior, Jesus Christ. So today, if there are those that do not know you, I pray that God, they would accept you, that they would put you on the throne of their heart, that God, we would be busy as the shepherds were that first Christmas morning to tell everyone we know about this baby who has come and his name is Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for this day. Now, would you be with each of us? Keep us safe upon our holidays as we travel and as we celebrate your son, Jesus Christ. Keep your hand upon us, God, that as we're busy about telling others about you, may we live our life completely surrendered to you. We ask it, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody's neck before you leave. Don't forget to get cake. I don't want to take any more cake home. Go eat the cake.